Hi, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for clicking. I am so excited for today because this is going to be the most in-depth video I have ever done on this channel. I spent so much time planning it and this is a very, very frequently asked question. I originally shied away from the topic just because the topic of money and pricing is so subjective. But I thought I would kind of give you guys a bit of a guideline just to get you started. Major disclaimer in this video is that I am not a businesswoman. This is not my specialty. I'm just an artist who's really passionate about what I do and I like to sell my items. I don't even know if any of this is proper, but this is just what I do. So that's a big, big disclaimer. Not a businesswoman. I am an artist. But I like to help you guys out and like kind of tell you what I do. And since I've been asked this many times, I thought... It's time to finally do this video. You can have your own methods, even if you only take away one point from this video. I hope it's helpful, and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. I actually broke my leg, currently have it resting on a pillow, so you're going to see a lot more content from me going forward because I have nothing but time right now, so subscribe if you want to see some more resin tutorials slash business type videos because there's going to be a lot of them coming out soon. <laughs> I chose to talk about keychains specifically. Obviously, you can kind of take this formula I'm going to talk about and apply it to whatever it is you're making. I chose keychains because they sell really well and I know that they're really popular and people like making them if you are into resin art, so that's why I chose to talk about this specifically, but obviously my methods vary depending if I'm doing like paintings or really big projects. This is kind of specific to keychains, but yeah, just take this formula and apply it to whatever you're doing. In the description below, I will link how I ship my orders because that video does kind of come into play in this one. I'll also link it in the I. But that video is basically how I send my orders under $5, including internationally. I'm from Canada, so this is how I ship to even India, Australia, everywhere for under $5. And that does come into play in this video, and you'll see why. If you want to watch that and then come back to this video, or you can watch it after, um, it's kind of important, but yeah. The last thing I will say before we get into this whole video is we also have to be sensitive to people's money situations. I've had people tell me my stuff is overpriced and I'm sure if you sell you've been through it and it's not a nice feeling. I've had people comment it, say it to me and we just have to remember that not everyone comes from the same financial situation. I usually sell my keychains for, for around $23, $22 and for some people that's like, oh perfect, a no shipping cost and a custom made keychain just for me, 22 bucks, nothing. For some people that decides whether they eat or not that day. So we have to be sensitive to that and if somebody ever calls your work overpriced, just remember they're probably going through something and it's also so subjective because we have to think about making profit and getting paid for our work and our time and some people are still not going to agree with that even once I break this down in this video some people are still not going to agree with me and that's totally fine everyone can have their own opinions and everyone comes from different financial situations and views certain things as worth spending money on and not worth spending money on so it's okay. Right, I'm gonna make this video as visual as possible because if you're anything like me, if I just start saying a bunch of numbers and stuff, it's not gonna make sense. So I'm gonna have a bunch of cutaway clips where I write things down because I just feel like the visual is going to help the understanding so much more than just saying a bunch of numbers. I went back on all of my past Amazon orders so I could give you guys exact numbers for this video and tell you exactly how much I spent on all of my supplies. The video is gonna be broken down into like the cost of materials and the time it takes to make it, profit, I'm gonna go into depth with all of that, so let's get into it. Okay, I'm going to split my materials into two sections, one time slash infrequent purchases and my constant purchases. So for example, I bought gold flakes, like gold sheets, probably two years ago and I haven't had to restock and I still have tons, so I don't really feel like including that in the constant restock items make sense or for example my heat gun and resin and all of that the restock items you know stuff like every time i make a keychain i'm using a keychain ring for that so that's something i'm frequently replacing but like my heat gun or my drill which i also use to make keychains i'm not really replacing those often so i still want to include them because if you are a beginner and you want to try and make your money back i think it's important to remember those items that you've spent even if you're using it on other resin projects you feel like now i've been doing it long enough that it's kind of just I've made the money back for that, if that makes sense. It's like I don't really need to include it in my cost, but it's just something to consider if you are starting out, is remember to make your money back on the supplies if possible. I hope that made sense. I don't know if I'm explaining that well, but hopefully I did. Okay, exciting part. Let's get into these visuals. I just wrote this all down, 
and kind of mapped it out. But these are the one time slash infrequent purchases and these are all in Canadian dollars just for reference. So the alphabet molds ranged between 17 and $20. So about $20 for one. I personally have four I use interchangeably, but not the point. The gold, rose gold, and silver flakes, it was $15 for 300 sheets, about 100 of each color, which lasts me forever. I have not ever replaced this, like I said. My drill was $57, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. The drill bits I use are $13.55, and it is a micro box off of Amazon. Again, all in the description. Sandpaper brick. Oh, I didn't highlight the word brick. <laughs> That's funny. I just highlighted sandpaper. Okay, the sandpaper brick. I like have one and I found it in my garage like three years ago that I still use. So on Amazon I saw you can get four sandpaper bricks for about $10. And the heat gun I use is $40. And like I said here, items such as the heat gun or the drill, there are cheaper options. My first heat gun was about $20 and you could get one of those little crafting drills. You don't have to get a big electric drill so yeah you can also cut costs here by getting cheaper versions of what i spent total spent here is 155 dollars and 55 cents just something to keep in mind and i'm also going to show you the equation without these because at some point you're going to feel like you kind of made your money back with this like for example the heat gun i use it with so many other projects that i kind of feel like i've made my money back and it's not that important to always include it but when you're first starting out you want to keep these costs in mind and try and make this money back now let's go through the restock items i'll try my best to straighten this so the art resin for 3.78 liters or half a gallon and by half a gallon i mean half a gallon of hardener and half a gallon of resin itself so yeah that is 175 including the tax i made sure to include the tax because this is important because it's listed for about 154 on amazon the 7.57 liters or one gallon bottle is $275 with tax as well. So that is here and I'm going to get into this in a sec as well. The jump rings are $17 for 900 and this is for various sizes. The eye pins are $8 for 300. The flowers range between $20 and $30 for about a pack of four, um, but I typically buy multiple packs, so I usually spend between $50 and $100, which seems crazy, but this is definitely the most expensive item, I would say, that I need to restock on, but I really love the flowers that I get, and I don't mind paying for them. Keychain rings. For some reason, when I checked my past orders, the gold ones, I bought 100 of them for $22, which is a little more than I would spend now because I found 300 keychains for $17 when I just checked Amazon yesterday when I was preparing for this. So, yeah, that is the cost. Oh, what is my total cost? I gotta write that down. I have it written down on my computer as about $97, which we can kind of round to about $100 on the restock items. But now let's break it down into how much it costs for each individual keychain. So this is important. I basically went and did the math. Also, I'm terrible at math. Let's say I spent $30 and you get 127 flowers in that order of $30, which is around what I saw. So you got 0 0.1574. So about 15 cents per flower, but in a keychain, we're not using a whole pack. We're just using about three flowers, so I times that by about three flowers, which is 45 cents. The jump rings, if it came out to a number like this, 0 0.019, I just rounded to one cent because it's just easiest for me. Like I said, I'm not good at math. So the eye pins I put at one cent, the flowers 45 cents, keychain rings are 22 cents for each individual ring. 72 cents was my total, and I'm just going to round that to a dollar just to make it easier on me, like I said, for the people that are bad at math like me. All right. But now we have to factor some stuff in. This feels like a math lesson. Okay, so we have to factor in the three to five dollars. Let's say you're new at resin. I'm gonna do an example not factoring this in here, but just for this sake, maybe you're just starting starting out, this is important. So if you wanna make your money back on those one-time one infrequent purchases, so you can factor in maybe three to five dollars of each order into that. So five dollars of the 155, then as you keep selling, you're eventually gonna make your money back. Um, factor in your time. So I'm going to get into time in a bit, but think about the time it takes to pour it, to sand it, to drill it, to package it. Packaging takes 
quite a while. Um, like I said, I'll talk about that later, but factor in your time. Don't forget to get paid for your time. Factor in the cost of shipping materials and the cost to ship it. All of my materials plus the cost to ship it, I do it for $5. So all together that brings us to about $13 to $15 to make. Or you, let's say you don't want to factor in the $5 up here and you do the 3 then it comes out to about $11. So if I sell it for $23 like I usually do, then that's only giving us that much profit. Um, which is not even that strong of a profit. Now, let's say we don't factor in the cost of the one-time purchases. I just wanted to show you what you kind of can do and like what to think about if you're really new to this and you've spent all this money on materials. Just make sure that you're making that money back um, in order to make a decent profit. Okay, let's get into that. And let's say I'm spending $5 on shipping. Let's say I give myself a dollar for restock items that we went over before and let's say how much should I give myself let's say I give myself three dollars for my time per keychain keep in mind this is not all together nine dollars to make each keychain which gives us fourteen dollars profit for what I am selling it for which I think is pretty good obviously fourteen dollars is not a lot of money but I think that's pretty decent profit what I said on I looked online on how to do this so it said twenty three dollars is the revenue divided by the $14 profit, which gives us 0 0.6086. So let's just say about 60% profit margin, I think was the word, I don't know. There was some business term that said 60% is really good, which is what we're getting here if we are not factoring in the um, one-time purchases. So overall, that is a good I like those numbers, I think that's pretty decent. And of course, if you are actually charging shipping on your items, you can take that out, and then you're making even more profit because you're not, you're making the customer pay shipping. But like I said, I do not wanna charge shipping because a small little package, the bubble mailers that I ship in are like $12 for a small thing. So I don't wanna charge $20 or even less than that. Let's say I charge $15 and then they're still paying like $12 shipping. I don't want someone paying almost the same price of the item in the shipping, which is why I do free shipping and I have to consider that in my calculations. But like I said, that's why it could be different for everybody. Okay, I just finished those cutaway clips. Hopefully you can't see all the mess behind me. I just finished those cutaway clips. Hopefully that made sense. Um, you can just kind of take that breakdown and factor it into whatever you're doing. And if you want to add more money for your time and think of it that way or whatever you want to do, just kind of follow that basic guideline and it should get you to your answer of how much profit you're making. Like I said, these are kind of just rough estimations. I think I might actually time myself doing my work because I want to give you guys like like I said exact calculations there exact timings I don't know I could this could take way more or way less time than I'm imagining in my head for each individual keychain all right let's time it here we go this is going to obviously be a very sped up version of creating this but I wanted to actually time it and give you guys exact calculations exact time and really go in depth in this video so here I am pouring a custom keychain order that I got Actually pouring the keychain took just over 10 minutes and keep in mind that's per keychain so if I'm making multiple obviously that time's going to go up by a lot. 24 hours later you can take your keychain out of the mold and start sanding, drilling, and then packaging it and then I'm going to show you how long that took all together. To finalize the keychain took just over four minutes, so let's say we're at about 15 minutes so far on just with this one keychain. All right, so packaging took about five minutes. Let's say that each keychain takes about 20 minutes of time altogether, plus the 24 hour cure time. 
have to get into such an important chapter of this, which is your time, because as an artist, as a creator, as a small business, you have to get paid for your time. And that is something that a lot of us are afraid to charge for because sometimes we get, you know, should I, what's, what's another word for the swear word I'm thinking of? We get some crap about it. There we go. We get some crap about charging for our products, even though, like I always say, we are not a big corporation Amazon shipping center. Like we are just one person usually, and it takes a lot of time to create these products. So, you know, you have to pour the keychain. And personally, I get a lot of questions on how much resin it takes to make one keychain. I never know the answer to that because I never pour one keychain at once. To me, that just seems like a waste of time to get all set up and have mixed for four minutes. I mean, if you're only making keychains, of course it's not a waste of time. But for me, because I have lots of other projects going on, I'm just like, I might as well pour other things while I'm at it. So I usually just pour like a batch and mix for four minutes and then create, I'll usually make the keychain and then move on to something else with the rest of the resin. So that's why I don't know how much resin takes for one keychain. Chain. If you know, let me know below. Someone's told me, but I'm forgetting the numbers now. And that's also why I didn't factor the resin into my calculations because then I'd have to think about like how many milliliters per keychain and then do the math on that, which I am not good at. In my opinion, because I'm using the resin for so many other things, I don't really calculate the resin for each individual keychain because it's such a small amount. So if you really want to go ahead and like take this a step further and figure out how much the cost of the resin is that you're using, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, I just didn't do that in this video. To pour the resin in and then you're placing the flowers, mixing around with that, it usually probably takes me between 10 and 15 minutes per keychain. And then throughout the next hour or so, I just kind of watch over it, pop bubbles as they come up and I like take a popsicle stick, go through the edges, take the bubbles out so that it doesn't cure with big holes in it. So then there's also like this kind of, the time I say I put a lot of love into it, you know, I make sure it's gonna turn out at the end. Then it's the 24 hour cure time, which, you know, is still your time. You can't just make these products on the fly. And of course, taking it out of the mold, sanding it, drilling it, and packaging it. Packaging for me takes a little bit longer because I do handwritten notes with all of my orders. So factor in that time, you know, make sure you're thinking about the time it takes to package your items. It's super important. And going and dropping it off at the post office or mailbox, whatever you're doing, that's still your time and that's your working time. Um, I can't tell you how much to charge for that because that is so subjective. I just use an example of like, let's say I, you know, charge a couple dollars, but you can charge whatever you would like. Um, that was just obviously, yeah, an example. I don't use shipping labels because I don't use tracking with my small items, which I explain in my shipping video, but um, that means I have to handwrite the addresses. It doesn't take long, but it's something to consider is, you know, all those little things that do add up and do take up time in your day. It's important to pay yourself and value your time. You are important as an artist, and I want to make sure that you take that into account. <laughs> doesn't apply to this video as much, but if you are making listings as well and putting things up for sale, then taking photos, editing the photos, and putting them up for sale also takes time. So just kind of keep those things in the back of your mind when you're coming up with your prices. Yeah, I'm figuring out this ring light still, so it might be a little bright and I might hate this while I'm editing. I hope that this all made sense. I tried to explain it as in-depth as I possibly could. And like I said at the beginning, if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. I really appreciate you being here with me in this video and I've done so many tutorials lately that I thought it was time to start doing a little more business theme video so if you have suggestions please leave them down below I would love to make a video for you guys even if it's just a quick question in a short video it would be awesome to know what you guys want to see that's really important to me I've been talking forever now thank you for being here and I hope to see you in my next video bye I have no idea if that video went well or not I guess we'll find out Thank <laughs> you.